Hey guys, this week is another Brigade Challenge Cake. This means they voted on a theme and the winning one was musicals. Stick around to the end of the video to see what everybody else made and vote for your favourites in the comments below. But we're just going to jump straight in and I've got a piece of greaseproof paper laid on an acrylic circle. You can just use any flat surface you have such as a chopping board or straight on your worktop. I'm adding a blob of ganache in the centre, making sure to keep it quite chunky and I'm just aiming for the same size of my cake, which is a 6 inch round. I've then placed my first layer of cake on and I'm checking that the ganache is visible all the way around. I'm then filling it with my buttercream and because this cake was for my daughter, I'm adding in some crushed up munchies. Keep stacking and filling your cakes, but I'm just starting to smooth out the excess ganache up the sides on mine because it's incredibly cold in the studio today and it's starting to set really fast. I just want to get that excess ganache up out of the way so it doesn't harden in a blob at the bottom. Now usually my cakes have four layers of sponge and three layers of filling, which creates a nice tall tier. But as we're flipping this cake top forward, it means that nice tall tier is then going to turn our arched cake into a tunnel. So I've decided to only use three layers of sponge. We're then going to coat the whole thing in a layer of ganache to seal it in. And you'll notice we have a layer of ganache on the bottom, on the top and all the sides, and there's no board involved yet. We just want to seal all that sponge in. I'm now taking my Profroster, but you can use a regular scraper, and I'm just removing some of that set ganache from the greaseproof paper on the bottom. I'm not yet scraping the cake. This is just so when we come to smooth the cake, my scraper isn't getting stuck in all that chocolate on the paper. Once that's set, which literally took seconds in this cold studio today, I'm adding a final layer of ganache. You just want to keep adding it and scraping it with your Profroster or scraper until it starts to resemble a cleaner, round looking cake. I was a little short on time, so I didn't fully neaten it, but you can take as much time as you need. Now we want to cut the base flat for it to sit on, and I'm just marking with my knife roughly how much I want to cut off. You then want to carefully cut all the way down, and I'm doing it slowly and watching the angle of the knife to make sure I get the cut as straight as possible. Just loosen the part of the cake from your paper and you have yummy leftovers to eat. I've now brought in my drum with a little bit of ganache in the centre and I'm taking my cake, flipping it over and peeling off that greaseproof paper to reveal a nice, clean, flat ganached front. And this is why I love ganache. Just look how you can mess with it and it keeps its shape. Certainly couldn't do that with buttercream. I'm then sticking that flat bottom to the board with ganache and centering it where I want it. As you can see, adding that extra cake would have turned this into a big long tunnel instead of a nice arched round shape. So making these types of cakes does give you a little less sponge than if it was a regular tear. I'm then just spritzing the curve with water and brushing it on evenly. I've rolled out my white sugar paste in a long rectangle and I'm just laying it straight over and cutting off the excess. These plastic scrapers come in really handy as I like to use them to push the sugar paste right into all the gaps. Once it's on, start cutting off all the excess paste, laying your scalpel up flat against the ganache and trimming both sides. And then dampening the fronts and also wetting that exposed sugar paste on the edge to make sure my circles will stick. I've then got another piece of sugar paste which I've cut a flat bottom on to put it up against the board. You might find it easier to trim off some of the excess paste first and then go in a little bit closer to trim off the overhang. Just rest your scalpel on the sugar paste and follow the shape. I've then got my flexi smoothers and I'm just holding one still and I'm butting up the sharp edge against the join. This will just sharpen your edge and also minimise the join in your sugar paste. 
Just do both sides and then we're ready for the airbrush. I've just got some pink water-based airbrush colour and I'm circling around the centre on both sides. I've then switched to purple airbrush colour and to be honest, I'm still on the hunt for a really good one. Purple is a little bit of a hard colour to create in spray. So once I'd sprayed the whole thing in my plum slash aubergine colour, I then filled my airbrush with blue to go over it. I wanted a bluey purple instead of a reddy purple. So I'm just laying this over all my purple spots and circling around that centre pink spot. I was working off the six musical poster and it was just a much more bluey purple. Then I've traced the front of the cake on a piece of greaseproof paper so I know how big my elements can be on the front. This is handy even if you're just maybe putting a silhouette on or just want to make sure your designs and cutouts will fit. I traced the letters onto mine and now I'm going to cut them from white paste. I'm adding some Tylo powder to it because it makes it easier to cut. You've just got much less stretching. I'm just laying it over the top and you can draw around it with a sharp pencil or a Dresden tool to leave an impression. Then just follow that impression with your scalpel to cut them out. I've placed them all on a foam mat to help them firm up a little bit. Whilst they do, I'm going to cover the board and I've got some dark purple paste. This was made using purple Renshaw's paste mixed with black paste and I'm just using the toilet seat method which even works for this shape. The full length tutorial for that is always linked in the description box below. I was going to use black but my microphone wire is black and I felt it would get lost on the board a bit so I opted for a deep purple. Now I'm taking some veg fat. In the UK this is known as Trex or in America it is called Crisco. I'm just rubbing it over the back of my template where the letters are. Then I'm sticking my letters to the Trex, lining them up with the cutout on the other side. This just ensures my letters are in the right place, they're level and they're going to fit on the front. Once they're on I'm just dampening the backs with water so they'll stick to the cake. Gently hold up your template and stick them down by pressing them on with your finger. Gently peel away the greaseproof paper to reveal your perfectly placed design. If there's any trek stuck to the letters, it comes off with a quick wipe of your finger or kitchen towel. For the crown, I decided to build this on the cake and I'm just holding my template up and marking out on the cake where it needs to be placed. It's then just built up with various little rectangles and strips of sugar paste placed on individually. Now if you have a crown mould, this would make this job so much quicker. I'm then using Faye's Signature Gold Dust mixed with lemon extract to paint on the crown. For the microphone I'm using a polystyrene egg. These are always handy to pick up around Easter and I'm just chopping the small end flat so it resembles the newer type of microphones. I've then got some black sugar paste and I'm just pushing and wrapping this tightly around the polystyrene. The black paste is usually very sticky so I don't need any water but feel free to use water if it helps. I'm then just moulding this to my egg shape, rolling it across the worktop and slowly teasing those points out thinner and thinner until you're able to either cut or pinch them off. Once you're happy with the shape, I've just got this little texture mat which has tiny tiny squares on. Everything I use will be linked below. For the handle, I'm rolling out a chunky sausage of white paste and I'm dampening a kebab stick and running it through the centre.
Roll this on your worktop again to even it out and cut the stick down so there's enough showing to place your microphone head on. Push the microphone head down onto your handle and with a little bit of water place it on top of your cake. As the head is lightweight polystyrene and you have your centre stick holding it, it will stay nice and straight and balances surprisingly well in place. I've then mixed more of the gold paint and I'm just painting the whole handle. At the base I'm just adding a small cylinder of black and poking a hole in the bottom to feed in a long black sugar paste string which I'm then just going to wrap over the board however it lands for the microphone wire. I then find this mould in my drawer that I've hardly ever used, but it makes these stud shapes. I'm just going to dust it generously, lay some of my dark purple paste inside to cut out a strip of studs for the microphone. Hardcore fans will know that the queens have their own colour, and they will either have studs or diamantes on their microphones. So feel free to use the colour of your recipient's favourite queen. I'm then just painting over the water to get rid of any excess icing sugar. I also wrapped a black strip around the centre of the microphone. For the board I'm just adding some gold pearls with water but you can also add some spiked studs if you have time. And that's it! Not only was this my musicals challenge piece but it was also my daughter's birthday cake. But no, my daughter's birthday isn't in January, it was actually back in August and she's only just getting round to having her cake made. Ah, the downfalls of having your mum as the cake decorator. Please stick around now to see what musicals the Brigadiers chose for their challenge pieces. Remember, the challenge is open to all different art mediums, so some may not be cake. Let me know which is your favourite in the comments below, and voting is open until Friday. Thanks guys, see you next week.